Okay, um, I'm going to show you all how to clean a Walbro PZ30 carburetor. Um, this is a round slide carburetor. Uh, this came off my dirt bike. It's a 150cc. And um, brought it back um, the other day after riding it and it was really not liking any wide open throttle and it almost sounded, gave you that uh, impression that it was out of gas. <sighs> um, so we're going to take it apart here. I suspect some dirty jets in it um, and I'll show you all how to clean those a pretty easy way since a few of them are very small. So I've drained all the gas out of it which you can do while it's either still on the bike or after you take it off you can loosen this um, screw here on the bottom of the fuel bowl and the fuel will drain out the overflow. After you do that, there are on this one three screws on the bottom of the bowl. They're Phillips head and take those out. There's one. We'll set that aside. And we'll do this one here. There's the second one. And the last one here. And set that aside. Okay. So that opens up our fuel bowl. Now, your bowl should look clean down in there. Um, if there's anything in there you can wipe it out with um, like a t uh, paper towel balled up just to get down in the small things. Mine looks pretty good. Um, I don't see any specks of anything down in there so we'll just set it over here. Now in here you have your fuel bowl floats. Um, to picture how these work, you got to turn it up right side up, and you see how they fall down. Well, when this fills up with gas, these floats come up and push up, and as soon as they get level, or about level, they push a needle in back here, and that shuts off the gas. And as soon as that engine uses that gas, it'll drop down a little bit and fill up again and shut off. It's almost like the float in your toilet tank. It works in pretty much the same, same fashion. Okay, so... Here you see your main and pilot jet, right here, and your air screw. Now the air screw is the only one of all of these that are accessible from the outside. Um, so you can do you can mess with that setting while the engine's running or off without disassembling the carburetor. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna take out the float assembly, and there's a pin in here and we'll have to press that pin out and it's actually pretty easy this one almost falls out sometimes just like this I can pull it out and it's, I'll set that aside and now our float assembly here let me adjust the camera a little more our float assembly will pop right out and you have to watch and be careful because on the bottom is this needle with a spring retainer on the top I keep them together in one piece unless I'm just cleaning this. Mine looks fine and there's nothing stuck to the rubber tip on that needle. So we'll just set that aside in our parts tray. Okay, now what we're left with is both of our jets. Um, and now since I suspected that those were dirty, I'm going to take both of those out. And they are slotted with a flathead screwdriver slot, which makes taking them out pretty easy. Just turn like that to break them loose, and you can unscrew the rest of the way with your hand. And this one is very long. Um, and it has holes at the top. You may not be able to see them on the camera, but there's tiny, tiny holes up here. And one here, there's three here, and one and three. Um, I'll wipe this off, and I'm going to look through it. And you should be able to see a small hole up through it. And I can barely see it, so I believe that it may have some trash in it. So what I'm going to do is I've got solid strand wire here. 
just some that I had laying around. And what I'm going to do is strip the coating off of it. Well, cut a piece off first. Rip it and strip some off. Maybe a little more. Okay. And here's what I've got. And I should be able to just ever so slightly run that through there. And you're not going to want to jam it through there. Just run it through there enough to, and maybe wiggle it around, but not. Just make sure that you do not scrape the inside of the jet with the tip of your wire. So run it through a couple of times. Just do like, do like this. Maybe spin a little bit. And when you look through it, you should be able to see a much better hole. See, you can see right through that. Now, we're going to set that aside, keep it clean. The second jet you're going to take out is a bit smaller. And you may have some problems getting your wire through that. Um, what I typically use to get mine out, to get trash out of mine, is multiple strand wire and I take one of the strands out um, because this type here typically does not fit through there as you can see it just it hangs up on it and I can't really see anything through this one either as a matter of fact and you don't want to force your wire through it if it doesn't go through it doesn't go through um, and you'll be hurting yourself trying to um, trying to force it through there because the jets are made of brass and the brass will enlarge very easily and you do not want that to happen. Okay, so we're cleaning the smaller jet here and I found a piece of multiple strand wire which I've got inserted into this jet here. Um, you can kind of see it a little bit I guess, the more I get away from it and it's inserted, it takes some finesse to get it all the way down into the hole that's in there. The, the outer hole is huge, but the inner hole is very small. And just put it in there, spin it around a little bit. I mean the wire is going to bend around obviously, it's very flimsy. But you should be able to see a hole through there at the very very end once you're done. And I probably can't get it on this camera because it's just such a small hole, but when I hold it up to the light here, I can actually see it pretty decently, as a matter of fact. And what I'm going to do is just blow through it, just to make sure that there's nothing else in there um, that can clog it up. And really and truly, I believe in blowing out your jets before you put them in. Um, compressed air is probably even better, um, but I didn't have the compressor ready. The reason this is, is when you're done with the wire, oftentimes you lose some dirt up that you don't get out. So that makes sure that there's nothing left in there that's loose that you didn't pull out with the wire that you could be putting back in there, just causing yourself more headache. I mean, there's nothing more frustrating than you cleaning the carburetor and still having carburetor problems and not knowing it and trying to track down something else. So we're going to set our smaller jet over here. And really the only thing left in here that we can mess with is our air screw. And so, just unscrew it. And there's a spring on the end of this that you'll see in a second. Try and get it to come out here with the screw. Okay. And there's a it's it's tapered in two spots. It's tapered here and tapered up here, and it's a real small needle on the end, um, not nearly as small as what that jet just was that we cleaned, but decently small. And you want to check for trash on the really small end here. And it looks like I may have something black on the end of it. I'm not totally sure, but we'll wipe it down anyways. And. Uh, get the oil off of it, or the gas, or whatever, and we'll take the spring, can't forget that, and we'll set that aside too. Okay, now the rest of this, um, it's, pretty, it's pretty empty right now. Um, what I'm going to do is 
use my carbon choke cleaner and just spray it down and spray it into those holes and that will help us get it clean and just empty it out like that okay and that should pretty much take care of everything we have to do in here it might spray a little down in the fall too just for good measure but it's going to leak out in the end anyways but it's good to do it just to make sure it's clean everywhere in there you know okay now what I'm going to do I'm not going to set this back down on this paper towel because um, as you can see it's quite dirty from all the trash we had fall off of it so I'm going to flip it over and get us a clean side here set it back down very gently and we're going to start reassembling first we're going to put our air screw in and the air screw is a calibration technique as I told you before for getting your fuel mixture straightened out. Um, as a base, I'm going to turn it all the way in, not crank it in, but just turn it in to where it seats firmly. I usually use the two finger on the screwdriver trick. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to notice where the top of the screwdriver is and I'm going to go one and a half turns out. So I'm going to go one and a half. Okay, that's a good starting point, and we can calibrate it further on the bike from there. But that's a good spot to start with, anyways. Okay, put our pilot jet in, run that in, do our screwdriver in the top of it. sure it seats good obviously like I said don't crank it down in there it's not like a, a bolt that holds an aircraft wing on and make sure our main jet is tight all right now what we need to do is put our float assembly back in like I said you need to make sure when you take it out that your needle is clean. I call it a needle, it's not really a needle I guess, but it looks kind of like a a plunger or whatever, float plunger, whatever you want to call it. Anyways, hold it into place, line up your holes, and put your pin through like this, push it in, and it's good to make sure that your floats are level. And mine sit level, as you can see. Or can you? Okay, the floats sit level. It's good to make sure of that before you put everything back together. If not, you may have to bend your bracket. Okay, so after that, we're going to put our fuel bowl back on. Put our three screws in that hold it together. Just thread them in by hand first to make sure you get them all started. And then we can run them in the rest of the way with the screwdriver. Now don't forget to tighten your drain screw in your fuel bowl before you put it back together. So just tighten that a little bit and you should be all set. And that is your cleaned up Walbro PZ30. Now what I do after I get the fuel reconnected and everything, I've got my fuel filter here. 
connect the fuel, turn on your pitcock or whatever to get your gas flowing, and I go around the side of the bike after I get it all mounted up and crack this until I see gas running out here. That bleeds your system through, and that way you don't have to kick start for like 30 minutes trying to get this thing started in it. Probably will kick on, start running on the first try. Um, or the first couple, anyways. That makes life a whole lot easier if you bleed it through. And that is all there is to it.